Well, dear students, uh, good evening, and let me share with you some audio tape lecture of sulfonyl urea that we have been through in our classroom. So, what are sulfonyl ureas? You are quite familiar with uh, uh, that the sulfonyl ureas are secretive drugs. They secrete the uh, insulin from the working pancreas, mean the islet of Langer hands, you see. And we have been to that for a detailed understanding about how it works and what is diabetes mellitus, what is the role of cortisol, what is the stress. So that is available about uh, on this link on my previous vi uh, video, which is available on YouTube. Uh, you must know uh, uh, the basic concept of the general pharmacology as well. And if you don't know the general pharmacology, you may feel difficulties for some understanding like uh, enzyme induction, enzyme inhibition, pharmacokinetics, and of course, you may come across with the metabolism, uh, so problem related to absorption, metabolism, distribution, and elimination. I hope you have been through uh, your general pharmacology concept before going for this lecture. Let me proceed. These are the objectives and classify all into diabetic drugs and then the sulfonyl ureas and the next objective you are always focused on sulfonyl ureas because a lot of classification is there. So we will be focusing on on, on these objective in perspective of sulfonyl ureas. So, you know, drug used to treat or diabetes mellitus, diabetes mellitus is type 2 diabetes mellitus, well, oral hypoglycemic drugs are advised, and it includes sulfonyl ureas and then glenides. Remember, we have discussed it in the class that sulfonyl ureas act at the both first phase and the second phase, whereas glenides act only at the first phase. So, so, so they have less chances for glenides have less chances for development of hypoglycemia as compared to sulfonyl ureas. I mean, we talked about exenatides, you see, and we have also talked about insulin sensitizers, especially begonides, penformin, metformin, glitazone, pyoglitazone, rosiglitazone. We have been through that. So we will be not focusing on that. Rather, we will be focusing in this lecture on sulfonyl ureas. Uh, other classes of drugs are, you see, alpha glucosidase inhibitors and then the GLUT2, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 uh, inhibitors class of drugs, and these are uh, also, uh, they are also a separate class, and we have been through that in the classroom. But nevertheless, we are focusing in today's lecture on sulfonyl urea, so let me go ahead for sulfonyl urea. Uh, this is the classification of sulfonyl ureas. Uh, you may find it first generation, second generation, third generation. And this is the dose per day. How, what are the dose per day given? And uh, you see for tall butamide, uh, remember this is safe in elderly but metabolized through the liver. This is a technical point to remember. Whereas chlorpropamide, this is its dose per day, given once a day usually. And the mm, duration of action is usually sometimes it goes up to 60 hours. And going this to 60 hours means it says the longest duration of action. So, so metabolism is through the kidney, uh, elimination is through the kidney, and 70% it is metabolized in the liver. And remember, here it is 100% metabolized in the liver, that is tolbutamide. So, this is something related to pharmacokinetics. And if you have not just studied the metabolism um, and elimination, then you may be in problem. Nevertheless, we go to the second generation. In second generation, they have also have a mixed uh, pathway. Follow the mixed pathway. Mixed pathway mean that they 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 are metabolized in the liver and eliminated by the kidneys. You see, and it has chances of hypoglycemia up to 30% and 30% is a huge figure as we discussed in the class that you should be quite vigilant about uh, while using sulfonyl urea so that your patient may not miss a meal and um, you see since it is going to secrete insulin so insulin is then uptaken inside the cell and you see and it's going, going to take the there are certain membrane effect and intracellular response of the insulins are there so it is a potent hypokalemic agent as well. Keep in mind that it will be going to produce electrolyte imbalance as well. Uh, the second thing that is uh, glipizide, you see, 
similarly to metabolize in the liver you see in eliminated by the why the why the kidneys but remember risk of hypoglycemia again is here and the same as lip for glipizide and glycolazide you see uh, that's the same mechanism for elimination why the why why the kidneys remember remember uh, very important thing is that uh, glimepiride is usually regarded as a relatively safe i'm using the word relatively safe in renal fashion as compared to other sulfonyl ureas so so these drugs shall be considered as especially glimepiride may be considered as relatively safe in renal patient and remember since these drugs are also more selective to beta cells and that beta cells so the cells on the other uh, effects uh, are not affected especially um, like uh, glucagon or uh, alpha cells or um, so whatever the case is so important thing for you to understand in this slide is that glimepiride is relatively safe though its elimination is by the renal route so these uh, second generation follows a next pathway it is metabolized in the liver and at the same time it is eliminated by kidneys this is a technical point to remember and this uh, chlorpropamide has the longest duration of action whereas uh, tolbutamide is relatively safe in patient having a history of uh, liver injury uh, now this is explain the mechanism of action of oral anti diabetic drugs especially sulfonyl ureas we have been through that in the class that is going to uh, uh, beta glucose enters the beta cells and once it enters the beta cells so 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 um, um, glad to by by glad to glucose transporter and the glucokinase uh, enzyme is stimulated it goes to the glycolysis and you see and then atp is generated and this will be clear in the next slide i think so let you go ahead for that one this one yes uh, when glucose is transported from here from outside glucose is translated is, is transported inside the cell then glucokinase enzyme is is stimulated and you see it is then converted into glucose six phosphate and it goes to the krebs cycles and after going to the krebs cycles you know for involvement of some adp into atp and this atp adp ratio when that is increased so what happens it's going to block this it's going to the sulfonaria sulfonaria is going to block this potassium e flux cells you see that is atp Uh, dependent on uh, potassium um, channel that is blocked by the sulfonyl ureas and once it is blocked so what happens an influx of calcium goes inside the cells and this increasing the in, internal positivity of the cells that will lead to the release of the insulin from the vesicle so fusion of the vesicle of beta cells that occurs and thus the sulfonyl ureas have a beta cell cytotropic effect so this is how it is discussed in this paragraph and uh, a very important thing is that uh, sulfonyl urea inactivates inactivates potassium channels meaning that that it inactivates the potassium channels so it inactivates these potassium channels which is which is sensitive to adp adp atp ratio you see and this potassium e flux is there but sulfonyl urea has blocked this one and consequently uh, this is followed by an e flux uh, influx of of calcium inside the cell as i discussed so therefore therefore what will happen release of insulin will be there and insulin will attack the blood glucose into the uh, tissues of into the liver and into the into the skeletal muscle and it will be stored as in shape of glycogen so there will be a weight gain and there will be is associated with hyperinsulinemia increasing insulin level in the blood and consequently risk of hypoglycemia will be there so in renal impairment there may be accumulation of uh, these sulfonyl ureas remember and what is renal impairment you see if you recall your memory uh, when 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 we take the drugs you see so when we take the food so it is usually the food contains carbohydrate as i discussed with you in the class it is divided it is broken down it is it is digested into monosaccharides monosaccharides mean glucose 
you see, and this is the most reliable form. And then it passes through the liver, you see, hepatic portal system is reaching the blood, you see, and then we call it as the blood glucose level. So, after taking food, you see, the blood glucose level is increased, and but at the same time, there is a, an organ called as uh, pancreas, you see, and from the pancreas, there are islet of Langerhans, the beta cells, which secretes insulin, and this insulin now comes and acts at this blood glucose and carries this to the skeletal muscle you see in shape of glycogen. This is what we have talked to you in, a, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the classroom. So there is glycogen as well. Glycogen are also there and so it is stored in the liver. Remember, it, the, the, the more you eat the sweet and carbohydrate, the more will be increased in the in the, in the glycogen and the more will be increased inside of the liver. There may be hepatomegaly, not usually associated with the virology. But sometimes it's associated with there may be there may be there may be there may be increase in the fatty fatty liver you see and to give prominent prominent starvation that is very important to mobilize these fats and mobilize this glycogen so that it shall be used as a source of energy and then 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 your patient body body weight loss will be there and your patient will have a very uh, good health. So, so this is a general phenomenon. But what happens? In a, you see this, 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 this. The, 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 it, it, it goes to the kidneys as well, as we discussed in the classroom. So, what happens? Going to the kidneys, here is G parts. You see, and and if you, your patient kidneys are, uh, are, are 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 not working, so what will happen? It's going to it's going to going to create problem for you. So if the kidneys if they are if the if, if the fifty percent kidneys are not working, so and the elimination of these drugs from the body, elimination of sulfonyl urea, elimination of sulfonyl urea is uh, now to the to the kidneys. You see, so it will uh, it will appear in the urine. But fifty percent of the of the kidneys are not working. It means that the dose, the drug amount in the blood that will be accumulated and accumulation, this accumulation of drug, you see, will lead to, will lead to, will lead to what? Will lead to a prolonged action of drug, prolonged action of drug, action of drug of sulfonylurea. So what is the possible risk in this case? Is the risk of hypoglycemia. So this is what it tells you that 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 in case of mm, 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 what you can say using sulfonyl urea and there is renal impairment so the elimination from the body through the kidney that is decreased and the amount in the blood will be increased so the chances for the hypoglycemia is increased that is what it tells you there was one question in the previous slide, what is the effect of autonomic drugs on the insulin secretion? So I will carry you stat. This is the mechanism you have been through and now you go to this one. So, so you see, in case of glycogenolysis, in case of autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic division and sympathetic division is there. So now what happened? In case of adrenergic nervous system stimulation, means sympathetic nervous system stimulation, which this, the the skeletal muscle have beta 2 receptors and the level have alpha 1 as well as beta 2 receptors. Thus, the glycogenolysis is increased, mean breakdown of the glucose is increased in case of sympathetic stimulation. So, so lipolysis is also increased. And remember, dear students, the renin in the system, you see, renin secretion is also increased. And insulin secretion insulin secretion to the alpha 2 receptor you see that is decreased and this decrease in insulin will lead to increasing blood glucose level this decrease will lead to increasing blood glucose level and this increasing blood glucose level in, in case of autonomic hyperreflexia or, or or stress you see that may be associated with a, a diabetogenic like effect so agents that affect the insulin release and these are the drugs you see that uh, is going to affect uh, uh, especially in hormones glucagon is increasing the insulin 
uh, secretion whereas somatostatin that decrease the insulin and remember sulfonylurea we are going to focus on sulfonylurea so sulfonylurea is going to increase the secretion whereas the agents like disoxide and thiazide diuretics then inhibits the, the the pancreatic secretion of insulin stimulates the glucose release from the liver and stimulates the catecholamine release and that catecholamine release is going to increase increase what they are going to increase the the glycogenolysis and glycogenolysis will increase the blood glucose level again so therefore 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 drugs like disoxide and thiazide also increasing um, you see the, the the blood glucose level uh, and and that can be that can be then increasing the blood glucose level so increasing the blood glucose level mean that reversibly if it goes as a phenomena you see autonomic nervous system stimulation so decrease in the insulin secretion may be there if it is go to if it is to the autonomic nervous system stimulation you see especially through the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system now because that is going to prepare you for the fight and flight mechanism that is going to prepare you for the fight and flight mechanism now the parasympathetic drugs you see that is going to decrease and this rest of the slide is self explanatory now uh, mention the pharmacological action of sulfonylurea as you see there is another objective mention the pharmacological action so the effects are there are two effects pancreatic effect and extra pancreatic effect regarding pancreatic effect we have discussed that in the previous slide you see they can cause hypoglycemia why because we discussed that that secretogab and insulin secretion is 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 promoted and the dose adjustment should be there uh, calcium channel blocker and thiazide you see produce hyperglycemia why how so if i carry you back to this uh, uh, mechanism you see after the previous slide so if we block this calcium if you give calcium channel blocker so it mean the entry of calcium is is blocked inside the cell is blocked now there will be less amount of calcium and the release of insulin will be inhibited and if the release of insulin is inhibited so it will lead to increasing blood glucose level that is why that is why that is why you see you calcium channel blockers can create problem for you especially if you are going to manage a diabetic patient who is already who is having hypertension as well uh it inhibits the glucagon release because their action is opposite to the alpha cells and extra 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 pancreatic effects you see the extra pancreatic effect mean that actions apart from the pancreas so you see uh, peripheral glucose uptake is increased and you see uh, liver uh, hepatic glucose production you see that is decreased why because it decreases the uh, gluconeogenesis you see inhibit the gluconeogenesis as it is and decreasing the metabolism of insulin in the liver this is a technical point to remember so metabolism of insulin is it decrease so it mean the level of insulin will be increased and this insulin level will increase it will it will then decrease the blood glucose level and regarding heart they block the potassium channels in the in the in the in the heart and therefore uh, if your patient is having an uh, arrhythmia or proarrhythmogenic or having a history of history of arrhythmia then we shall we shall take it uh, we shall we shall use sulfonylurea in those patients with caution or we shall go for the alternate drugs then the pharmacokinetics pharmacokinetics mean pharmaco mean drug kinetics mean movement absorption distribution elimination and metabolism you see and the absorption uh, when your patient take it through the oral drug oral route per oral route p o mean per oral route so its absorption is through the oral route as uh, as we, we we give it to the oral route is absorption is from the intestine you see distribution it is easily distributed and it is plasma protein binding is 92 90 nine person and cross the blood brain barrier placenta you see and therefore they can they cannot be given into pregnant women uh, glibenkamide is a drug that can be that can be that can be considered you see especially regarded as safe because of evidence based practice of medicine metabolism as we discussed in the previous slide that is 
So the cytochrome P450 enzymes, and one of the enzymes is cytochrome uh, P450 isozyme is 2C9 derivative, and you see uh, isozyme uh, isoform, you see, and then 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 the metabolism may be increased or metabolism may be decreased. It depends upon the drugs, which drugs you are going to use, whether that is enzyme induction inducer or enzyme inhibitors. Nevertheless, excretion or elimination is mostly through the renal route and and, and one should take care care this in keeping this point in mind as we have discussed that in the previous slide and remember tolbutamol has the shortest duration of action and it's mainly uh, you see excretion is through the hepatic or anterior hepatic circulation or hepatic route chlorpropamide has the longest longest duration of action and it is 30 percent is eliminated by a kidney and it is this this point is very important especially if your patient is suffering from renal impairment then you have to adjust the dose in case of severely ill renally uh, re, renal, renal impaired patient plasma half-life is four to nine hours however biological half-life it goes extends to sometime 24 hours that is why we recommend once a day dose of this long acting or second or third generation sulfonylureas are recommended just once a day in the respect to doses now the next objective is mention the indication of sulfonylurea so these are the indication of sulfonylurea type 2 diabetes mellitus and when your patient is not responding to uh, control uh, food and exercise then you can go take the support of drugs in non obese you see mild to moderate type 2 diabetes uh, mellitus patient maturity and sick diabetes uh, mellitus patients you see not uh, useful in the treatment of uh, mm, mm, uh, the treatment of type 1 diabetes mellitus keep in mind this is the contraindication it is not used in this is the point why because in they, they, they work on the sulfonylurea work on the working pancreas and release the insulin in case of type 1 diabetes mellitus there is no working pancreas so that is why uh, they are not recommended for the type 1 diabetes mellitus uh, not using the complicated type 2 diabetes mellitus you see as well and why because we have to go um, some time for the for the for the for the for the insulin as to manage the complicated case diabetes encephalitis you see chlorpropamide is used in diabetes encephalitis uh, but however the effect of chlorpropamide uh, is associated with severe hypoglycemia that respect is used Restricts its use in diabetes encephalitis. So, why it is used? Because it has uh, the effect of chlorpropamide resembles the effect of resistocene, which is usually less in the diabetes encephalitis and there is persistent thin urine, as we discussed in the class. The other objective is mention the side effects on contraindication of sulfonylureas, and that is, uh, of course, in type 1, because there is no working pancreas, there are no beta cells and type 2 diabetes mellitus using stress and their illness infection is there so so first you manage the patient with the uh, insulin injectable plus injectable um, you see non-insulin non, non -insulin, uh, injectables other preparation you see like uh, and then uh, you cannot give it in pregnancy you cannot give it in lactation severe hepatic L or renally L patient and sometimes if allergy to sulfur containing drugs is there because it is sulfonylure that contains sulfurs or any other cross reaction like sulfonamides other class of drugs are there so then you cannot give it and this is the side effects another objective is the side effects of these sulfonylureas so it produces hypoglycemia for easy understanding A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and that is allergy to skin reaction, bone marrow suppression, cross sensitivity and disulfuran like reaction. What is disulfuran like reaction? These effects include flushing of face, headache, nausea, vomiting, chest pain and weakness, blood vision, mental confusion, sweating, choking and remember it happens even if a small amount of alcohol uh, consumption is there and you administer uh, the sulfonylureas so it is going to produce as disulfuram like effect so sulfonylurea can be used uh, to induce disulfuram like effects in alcoholic and alcoholic will not go for the alcohol so it is one of the remedy how to 
get rid how to treat the patient suffering from chronic alcoholism but remember it is an emergency sometime and it needs hospitalization so do not go for uh, de alcoholism alkalization de alcoholism with the support of sulfonyl ureas or do not do it you it is properly done in the detoxification centers and then uh, edema may be there failure may be there gi disturbances may be there and if it on the heart and hypothyroidism you see hepatotoxicity hyponatremia and chlorpropamide so these are the uh, uh, what you can say possible adverse effects with sulfonyl ureas and it continues and the central nervous system you see this headache dizziness they are having teratogenic effect dogalbenic chlamydia is considered as safe because it's an old drug and based on evidence based practice of medicine yet uh, if you have an alternate then you can go for that weight gain is again a problem because insulin carries the blood glucose from the blood to the uh, muscles and to the liver you see so there is at least 2 to 5 kg from 2 kg to 5 kg weight is increased uh, within 2 months with the uh, sulfonyl ureas if your patient is managed with sulfonyl urea and then for mechanical drug interaction may be there you see at the level of plasma protein if salicylate or insaids this is small s if insaids this one insaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs why these drugs because they displace the sulfonyl ureas and 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 um, sulfonyl ureas also displace in the work volume you see so what will happen the pre uh, drug level uh, of this sulfonyl urea will be increased and then is associated with the risk of uh, distorted blood glucose level or blood glucose profile will be distorted will not be managed so metabolism may be there and in case of metabolism the, the enzymes may be inhibited inhibited mean it will not properly metabolize so these drugs inhibit these enzyme and consequently the drug level sulfonyl urea level in the blood will be increased and this will produce a risk of hypoglycemia as well so so adverse effects uh, may there may be enzyme inducer enzyme inducer mean that antiepileptic drugs mean like phenytoin or rapamycin this is into tuberculosis drugs and in case of chronic alcoholism this enzyme level is increased and once this enzyme level is increased so the sulfonyl urea level is decreased why because they are prim- they are metabolized with a more 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 fast more fast fast more 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 rapidly rather and if it is more rapidly metabolized so plasma level will be decreased and once the plasma level is decreased plasma level is decreased so 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 blood glucose level again will not be managed it may increase so therefore uh, at the level of kidney particular secretion salicylate also interfere and this salicylate will interfere so so the level of sulfonyl urea and this sulfonyl other drugs will be increased and it can cause who have a risk of hypoglycemia there may be pharmacodynamic interaction pharmacodynamic mean the drug that competes there with other drugs and the effect may be prolonged or decreased so this will be discussed in the next slides these are the drugs where its effects and metabolism is affected and the drug is you see uh, pharmacological responses are affected uh, Uh, these are some questions which can be answered by yourself why salicylate can induce hypoglycemia and we shall pone you as we discuss it the particular secretion and the level of kidney as level will be you see uh, uh, increased and once it level is increased so sulfonyl urea will produce hypoglycemia what is the relation between anticoagulant and sulfonyl urea because warfarin level warfarin will be dislodged and you see and warfarin level is change and the anticoagulant effect is you see a tendency toward bleeding is increased and why phenyl why phenytoin can raise the blood glucose level uh, and especially so this is what we have discussed it here so next is drugs with hypoglycemic effect and these are the drugs that when concomitantly used with sulfonyl urea they will produce the hypoglycemia and effects at the peripheral tissues you see hyper drugs that will increase the hyperglycemia that will produce the hyperglycemia so the effect may be at the periphery and the effect may be at the, and the insulin release 
and this is what we have been uh, like dioxide we have discussed that in the previous slides and attachment has also been discussed in the previous slides so this is the slide which I always I am referring to though it is not required but this shows the comparative effectiveness of different classes of in oral anticoagulant drugs uh, sorry oral anti uh, oral um, uh, anti diabetic drugs so see sulfonyl ureas well, and you see insulin has a person reduction in hba1c is one from 1 to 2 and similarly vegonides have from 1 to 2 and sulfonyl urea have from 1 to 2 you see and they are all equally uh, active pharmacologically active with exception of this class that is acarbose megalitol and alpha glucoside as inhibitors so this is important that you must know which class of oral anti-diabetic drug is the least effective and that is alpha glucoside as inhibitors i hope now you understand uh, the concept of these slides uh, thank you very much